Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the fifth episode of the Mobile UX podcast. My name is Aditya, along with my co-host Ashwarya, and our very first guest for the very first time, <laughs> never before, Mohammad. And welcome to the Mobile UX podcast, where we cover interesting web technologies and communities. So uh, recently, a brand new version of SFUI was released. So SFUI is the design system we use in Capybara. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, before we get into detail, I'm just going to give a quick introduction of what SFUI is. So SFUI is a design system uh, built in Vue.js, and it's built from the ground up as an e-commerce design system. And it's inspired heavily from the Google retail, uh, Google e-commerce UX playbook. So that's a great uh, UX playbook if you're looking to optimize your e-commerce website for mobile. I'll link it down below. So to get started in the changes, uh, this version that came out is SFUI version 0.9. And another version came out just quickly after to patch some things, 0.9.1. Um, I'm just going to cover a, a few small things before we get into a little bit of the bigger changes. Um, uh, one of the changes that they made was uh, they reworked how they name and classify fonts. So mm -hmm. before there was this kind of confusing naming scheme where instead of defining if it was a font weight or not, you just had to know that normal and uh, what, what, do you know what the other ones were? It was like normal, small, basically weights and there was no way to just look at the name and see if it was a font weight or um, uh, size. So now they've added those names into the actual variable names, so it's easier to look at them. And they've also reduced the amount of font sizes. So that kind of cleans up the way the type system uh, kind of, I guess it was kind of getting a little bit out of hand before. So now it's a little bit scaled down. Uh, next up, the drop down button has gotten a minor update. Uh, before, there was a, uh, when we, you wanted to use a drop down, you had to um, use a button component, and then on top of that, you had to add a drop down yes. component. Select. S of select. S of select. So, uh, base now what they've done is they've combined that whole thing into one package, so you can just um, use the SF drop down component, mm -hmm. and I guess that gives you the button and the select mm -hmm. in one package, and so you don't have to write more uh, markup and HTML. After that, they've added um, a few new components all together. So the first one is text area, which is, uh, it's an atom, I think. Uh, text area is pretty straightforward, exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it's an area where the user can input various texts. Uh, to customize it, you can give it a placeholder value. Uh, you can change the size of the box by defining rows and columns. I think those are, line heights and characters are the dimension for the columns. So when you define column width, you're defining how many characters wide it is and rows is how many mm -hmm. line heights it is. Uh, you can also restrict the amount of text that somebody can put in it. So say you're using it for like a review or something and you want mm -hmm. it to be less than 200 characters or at least 50 words or characters, you can use it for that. And you can also make it required or not required, right. uh, optional. So here I'm just trying to rem remember what should be the use case of text area in the e-commerce uh, perspective. I mean, the uh, the library is based on the e-commerce widgets, right? Yeah. So I'm just wondering where we use text area on, e on an e-commerce site. I think mm -hmm. uh, for e-commerce, it would be useful to have a text area for uh, when we have, have a customer leave a review for a product. So right now, if we just give them a one-line mm -hmm. input, it's not very useful. So if we give yeah. them a proper text area, they can really, uh, that's where I think it would be useful. Yes, and uh, it's also useful in the gift note section. If you are gifting something to someone, you can add some small messages. Yes, I can also remember like there, there can be many use cases like uh, feedback form, like so you have a submit, you have, you so like after the orders placed, usually e-commerce sites have like a feedback of rate hour experience. Yeah, right, is that right. what you're talking about? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I think it's a nice addition for text area as uh, text areas are used in two or three places in e-commerce. Yeah. So making our HTML text area and applying styling uh, on exact same styling on all those areas. Yeah. So just using a specific text area provided by the library is good. 
Yeah, it's going to be useful. Next up, what took them so long to add this component? Since yeah, what took them so long? <laughs> it's the basic one, right? Yeah. Yeah, it should have been day one, guys. Come on now. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have the address picker. Um, in that, we have we can customize the font for the address picker, uh, which I guess we could probably do for text area too. I forgot to mention that. And the address picker, there's like a select icon to show if it's selected or not, so you can customize that. And also, you can customize uh, which um, address slots there are. So if you want to have like this country name, or if you don't want to have the country name, you can customize what pieces of the address you have in there. I think for one place that we could use that is that's going to be very handy is on that profile right now. We have a list of addresses that the customer has saved. Mm -hmm. And actually, right now, I don't think there's a way to save any one of them as a default. So this would be a twofold advantage of you can replace that UI with a straight up address picker because now you don't have to have your own address styling there. Mm -hmm. And also now you can select one of them as your default. Um, <laughs> the address picker is also really handy though because we can also just use it if we don't want to use the select functionality. I know in Capybara in our version we made an address component. Yes. yes. And so now I think we can use this and go out, go throughout the locations of where we've used that. Yeah, we were actually going to contribute it, but yeah, this came. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's nice that so, this came before yeah. that. Actually, maybe there's two different functionalities because this is mainly around selecting and we're mainly around displaying. So in one, I guess in the scenario you could use this on like an order detail page with like shipping and mm. the billing and all those addresses but also I think maybe we could define two separate use cases of like one that's an this is that's meant to be selected and one that's not meant to be so like interacted with um, so I I this think is, this should have that feature like yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can make it not selectable yeah, right yeah yes. yeah yes. actually you you it's a optional to have checkbox I guess okay. yes. But again, uh, this this could again have some fee, uh, feature regarding the title of the address. Like if you want to show mm -hmm. it is a shipping address, it's yeah. a building address. Mm -hmm. So that could also be incorporated in this. Yeah, that, I guess um, the, where the, it says Jack Smith in the screen right now, mm -hmm. that would be the name, I guess. Name, yes. So that Jack would be where you would put that name, I guess. If it's like, but you need both. I don't know. The I just, address. Uh, uh, component or means the uh, the states where the address is saved uh, is uh, having the uh, first name and last name by default so it's not the heading and it's a part of address only right so I guess it does need a it would be nice to have a heading slot in yes. the address picker any other places where you guys think we could be using the address picker in capybara mm. yeah uh, whenever we are in the check checkout process we can select the addresses uh, from list of addresses there we can show these addresses and user can select. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. Right now, even though you can save multiple addresses, you can only use that use the save billing address yes. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So instead of that, actually let the user use their multiple saved addresses. That would be kind of handy. And yeah, once the order is placed, you can show the addresses on the order detail view page. Yeah, that's also a good idea. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that will be without the checkbox, I guess. Correct. You know what, maybe if you have a selectable address picker on an order detail page, that could be part of like an order editing thing. You know how like if you want to like go back and change the shipping address. Mm -hmm. So maybe on like the order confirmation page, if you quickly want to change the selection, it would be handy. Who knows? But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, after that, uh, price range. So they have a component product card and other, another similar component is product card horizontal. So initially the price in the product card is only displayed uh, for just uh, a single number and now we have a range. So in this uh, product card uh, initially we only had one price but now we can have a price range here. So when do you think people are going to be using that? Uh, uh, whenever the variants are having uh, uh, different uh, price and another use cases maybe grouped uh, product or bundle product so if there's like different bundles you can have different yes. price ranges so different price price ranges can be any customizable product can be have a price range uh, another interesting uh, feature that came up in uh, nine, uh, 0.9 is uh, they have gave option to have fractional scaling like 2.5 3.5 so it's a nice little addition to product card. So uh, after that, um, Mohamed, do you want to go into? Do you want to tell us what it means to have 
I know they introduced Tailwind into SFUI, so what does that mean for us as developers? What does that give us? So yeah, they have uh, actually introduced Tailwind support in SFUI. So Tailwind is, Tailwind is basically a utility first framework, uh, which is pretty trendy nowadays. So uh, what it does is it, it has uh, many predefined libraries of classes which developer can easily use when he, when he's developing a website without writing too much CSS code. So basically, uh, for example, if you want to have a display flex or justify content property on, on certain class which you have on your website, then you don't need, a Tailwind has uh, uh, certain classes defined already which you can directly use on the element itself like a flex class when you apply a flex class there you won't you won't need to again define a new class for that element and define that property display flex for that it will mm. automatically apply that display flex for on that so it's element kind of like a shorthand for a lot of yeah that right success. correct right. that's a good addition here in sfui you can now use tailwind you have they have also uh, added an example how you can add it in the sfui mm -hmm. so so I've never used Tailwind before. So when you use it, does that like are you applying classes instead of writing CSS? You're just yes. applying pre-made classes in a yes. way. Uh, you uh, it reduces the code, and you can also use the mixins here. Like uh, you can have your own class and then use the Tailwind defined classes as a mixing there by okay. apply mixin. These are some uh, overviews regarding Tailwind. There is a lot more on the Tailwind which we can definitely cover in other episode like. But yeah, this is a good addition in SFUI. Uh, uh, I think it's also increased the readability of code. Right. Uh, that in the element we have some classes and we can just uh, judge it by the name. Right. So it's good improvement for the readability also. I wonder how much this is gonna, maybe it's gonna be better, maybe it's gonna, I wonder if it might hinder customizability though. Because I'm just thinking uh, if I want to like tweak something inside mm -hmm. of that, I have to, if I'm using a pre-made class, I don't know how easy it is to go into Tailwind. Maybe I would have to go and change that at a framework level, or would I be able, like, can I just override the pieces of the Tailwind class right there and it just overrides the CSS that I write after it? Like, I'm just thinking about all that. Like, how if I wanted to, like, maybe I want to, like, change a flex to, like, flex row column, but I've used the Tailwind class, so can I just write flex direction column and it overrides that bit from the Tailwind class? These are, these are just things that are running through my mind, and I guess we can get into detail about that when we do like a Tailwind episode. Uh, actually, there is uh, another cool feature the, which they have added in this version mm. in SFUI, which is to pull the uh, whole library into your project. Mm. Like they have added a script which you run and <coughs> the whole library will be downloaded in, into your project. So this this actually makes it really easy for a developer to do the customization. Previously, SFUI was used as a node dependency. And if you want to do some, some, some of your own customization, then uh, you need to go through all the node modules structure and go deep inside the folder structure of SFUI and you, want, and you do the customization. Now they have introduced this script which will directly give you all, all the code and you can put it anywhere in, into your project and the customization uh, becomes really easy and an another thing this helps with is uh, like uh, there is there might be situation where you want some customization yeah, like some something is done on the develop branch and there, it is not in the release branch actually mm. right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the node dependency, you can actually use the uh, ver release version only mm -hmm. in your project. Right. And if if there is something which is there in the develop uh, develop branch and you want to use it in, in your project, you just pull that over. yeah, you just pull that over mm -hmm. and you just uh, add it to your repository. So okay. this will help you to do the customization in your project ahead of the release branch. Mm -hmm. So how does that work with um, upgrade cycles? So like if there's like a new release of SFUI, how does the upgradability work? Uh, if I've like customized some components inside of my, my own uh, capybara, mm -hmm. what sticks, what doesn't stick? How does that upgrade process work? That, that is the advan disadvantage here. Yes. Okay. Like you, 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 you actually 
does not remain in the sync with the project okay. if you pull it but yeah so you're Again, knowingly that's making more. a trade off that yeah. i want to do this but knowingly i'm not going to be able to easily upgrade i'm going to have to do my own upgrade management right. that makes sense hmm. so yeah for uh, any heavy customization requirement people you can use the script and uh, if you are just want to use it otb and you can use it as a node dependency mm. right. I think there's actually some issues with that we're having with SF Gallery mm-hmm. and that we might want to fix using this yeah, by just definitely. replacing the whole thing. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, nice. Uh, looks like we've covered most of what we wanted to talk about. After that, there was also a lot of refactoring that was done across the atoms, the molecules. Uh, there's a lot of just cleaning up the naming scheme of a lot of uh, things within them, so c- making the namings consistent, stuff like that. Uh, that's what we wanted to talk about for this. So, if we're interested, we can think of some contributions that we've done, or we can call it a wrap, what we want to do. I think we can, we can call it a wrap. Uh-huh.